Hello friends! Welcome back to science. I'm so excited you're joining me today for chemistry week two. My name is Dr. Erica and if you've missed the first week of chemistry, you can always go check it out at rosyresearch.com, on our YouTube channel, on Facebook, all of the good things. And you can support us at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. And make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get notifications when we go live and do our fun experiments. So today our big experiment is we are going to make water, which is really cool. And we are, do, would you like me to stop? <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, we're gonna pause for a second and see, it sounds like we maybe have technical difficulties. All right, go ahead and restart. All right. Hello. Welcome back to Science Guys. Hopefully you can hear us great today. I am Dr. Erica. We are back with our second week of chemistry. If you missed our first week, make sure you check out our YouTube channel. We have some really fun and super easy projects that you guys can do. You can always support us at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. And we have two really fun experiments along with a field trip this week. So today's experiment, we are going to make heat, which is really cool. And we are not going to make heat with electricity or the normal ways that you might think about making heat. We're going to make heat by mixing some things together that are all at room temperature. So that's going to be kind of peculiar. It's actually called an exothermic reaction. Exo, because things are leaving, so heat is leaving our system, and thermic, because thermic kind of sounds like temperature, and it is. We're also going to create water, which is really cool, and oxygen gas, so I'm really excited. What we need for today, if you're doing this at your table, you need some sort of like baking pan or dish to contain your experiment in and not make a huge mess, that's very important. Um, you need some sort of a jar that you can run your experiment in. I have a few jars because I thought it'd be fun to try the experiment a couple different ways and see what happens. You need some hydrogen peroxide. The stronger the better, but you will see a reaction even with the lower um, percentages of hydrogen peroxide. You need some yeast. This is our yeast. We get it in a huge one pound thing. If you have really, really old yeast or dead yeast, this probably won't work for you. So we need to make sure our yeast is still happy and still alive because our yeast has an enzyme in it called catalase and it's a catalyst that brings things together and helps them mix up and if our yeast is dead it's not going to have that and it's not going to be able to bring things together like we need it to. If you want to see lots of bubbles you're going to want some dish soap and of course you could add something fun like uh, food coloring if you wanted to change the color. I have some warm water. You don't really need warm water if you don't want to. It's just a test we're going to do to see if we can make our reaction even bigger. But if you also think your yeast is a little bit weak and you want to test it, you can do that with a little bit of warm water. I have a funnel because the lid of this is really skinny and I was a little worried about that. And then of course I have a digital thermometer today. And that is because I told you that we're going to make heat. And I kind of want to be able to show that we were able to make heat. And a thermometer is a great tool that we can use to learn about and look at changes in heat. So those are the things that we have today. Now I said that we are going to make water and oxygen gas and we're going to do that with hydrogen peroxide. You'll notice if we look at this label it has H2O2. Now water is two hydrogens and one oxygen and oxygen gas is two oxygens. So I have all of the elements I need in here. There's nothing interesting and silly. I can turn this into water and oxygen gas, which is really cool. I just need to split apart the, the last little oxygen on the outside, right? So I could take two of these and one of them could go to an oxygen and I could have my water left over and we could do another one to create that oxygen gas. And the question is, ooh, how can we do that? And the answer is we need to bring it together and sort of, this will happen naturally with hydrogen peroxide, but we wanna speed it up. We wanna add that catalyst, which for us is yeast. So the first thing I'm going to show you to do this is really just with nothing extra and no warm water. What you would do is you add some of your hydrogen peroxide into your jar. 
All right, and you want to add it carefully. You don't want to spill it. It's not going to hurt you at some of the um, percentages, but we always want to be careful with our chemicals. All right, so we're going to add our hydrogen peroxide. And I'm going to add the dish soap next, all right, because the yeast is our catalyst. That's what's going to bring everything together to break up that hydrogen peroxide. So once I add the yeast in, my reaction is going to start, and it's going to be so happy that it's actually going to release the heat, which is going to be fun. But I want to make sure I add my soap in first. All right, so you can add in soap just like that. Oop, got some bubbles. And I mentioned that I wanted to take the temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my thermometer all the way down in here. And we can take our temperature and see what our starting temperature is. So on here, it looks like it is 65 degrees. This is just, I can turn on a little beeper so that if it goes above 71 degrees, we'll hear some beeping, which will be great. All right, and then the other thing that we need is our yeast. And, oh, I forgot a spoon. Let's see, we'll just add this guy in. I'm gonna take this out for just a second as we add our yeast in. Although I'm actually really, I don't think I want to really use um, the funnel because I'm gonna use the funnel later also. So I'm just gonna add the yeast. If it spills into my dish, it spills in. So I'm gonna add some yeast and you can see right away that I get some bubbles and you can just mix in that yeast. All right, you just mix it up and mix in that yeast and you'll notice I'm making a whole bunch of bubbles. Now the bubbles are being made partly because I have the soap there. The other reason why those bubbles are being made is because I'm filling them with a gas. And you might wonder, hmm, what gas is that? So remember, we're taking our hydrogen peroxide and we're splitting it into water and also oxygen gas. So that will tell me that this is the guy's oxygen gas. I can actually see, there's our 71 degrees, we've passed it. I can see steam coming off from this. And all of that, if you feel the foam that's coming out, it won't burn you, but it is very, very warm. All right, and that's because this reaction is happening so fast, it's releasing heat. All right, so some reactions we need heat, that's endothermic, we need to add heat to make it work. This one actually releases heat as it goes, which is really cool. And you can see it makes a whole lot. And I'm already up, let's see, to, let's see what our reading is. We got 70. Now when you read this, you kind of want to put it in the foam because the liquid's going to be down there. I'm at 89 degrees. All right, 90 degrees. So it started off at room temperature. My jar is pretty warm right now. All right, so that's very exothermic. And again, what we're doing is down here in this bottom, we're turning this liquid into water, and then we're releasing a whole bunch of gas that we're trapping in these soap bubbles, which is oxygen. So we have water and oxygen that's gonna be at the end. All right, now you might wonder, hmm, maybe yours didn't go quite as big as this. So one thing we could try, if we do that, let's see if we can get a good temperature reading. I think we said 90 degrees. We could prepare our yeast in advance instead of the hydrogen peroxide. So what you could do is you could add your yeast in here. All right, and this is if you're not sure if your yeast is alive, this is a great thing to do. You can also help make sure that your yeast is sort of woken up. And you're gonna add just some warm water, now not hot, because hot water will kill your yeast, okay? So you really wanna make sure it's not boiling water and that you could like, you know, I can sit here with my hand on the side of it. And it's, it's warm, but it's not hurting me. I'm not burning, all right? So you can add a little bit of that warm water in and you can mix your yeast around. And this will help your yeast sort of wake up. And in fact, if you leave it like this, you will see the yeast making its own bubbles as it goes through its process, because yeast is a single-celled organism, so it's its own little thing. Now, if you're starting like this, and this, we'll see if it gives us a bigger reaction, we want to add the soap first, and then the hydrogen peroxide, because it's when the hydrogen peroxide and the yeast touch that we get our reaction. So what we could do is we could, ooh, it's all sludgy, my yeast, nice and happy in that water. I could even add a little bit more water in there. And then we can add some of our dish soap. And again, that dish soap we're gonna use to really just capture our bubbles. And so this is the other way that we can do this experiment. If you're really not sure about your yeast, this will help it 
and it will help you see if you have a lower concentration of this hydrogen peroxide and we can then add in some hydrogen peroxide and we'll see our stuff go very quickly as well. Now in this one, because I have the yeast already sort of somewhat dissolved in that water, it's not like kernels, I don't see the kernels that are inside of my foam. And you can really see the seam on this one. So because we started with that warm water and that yeast, it was sort of happy in that water, you can really see it on this one. It makes this delightful foam, which is warm and goopy. It's a lot of fun to play with. And you can dye it with food coloring, which is really great. And we make a lot of heat, which is really cool. So we are now splitting up hydrogen peroxide. So it's called decomposing when we split it up. And we're decomposing it into water, which is H2O, and oxygen gas, which is O2, which is filling up these bubbles. So these bubbles are pure oxygen gas, which is surprising. Normally when we do things, it's usually carbon dioxide that we fill bubbles with. This one, pure oxygen gas. And we also notice that if we add the yeast into that water, we get a much bigger experiment. And that makes me curious, if you're at home and you wanna keep doing this, you can always check things like, ooh, does warm water versus cold water change it? What if I let the yeast sit for five minutes? Does that change it? What about if the hydrogen peroxide is warm? There's all these different things that you are gonna be able to test and try out with this one. And you can really keep doing it over and over again. It's a super easy mask because this is just soap. And because we de decompose it into water and oxygen gas, you can pour this all down your sink, all right? So you don't have to worry about any sort of chemicals in your sink, all it is is soap and very, like very fluffy soap and water. All right, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Tomorrow we're gonna take two clear liquids and make some really tiny solids. It's gonna be a lot of fun as we learn about precipitation, which is not the rain type of precipitation, but looks very, very similar. It'll be a lot of fun and I can't wait to see you guys then. And I will say goodbye to our YouTube family and hello to our Zoom family as we finish the project and you guys can share it with us. Have a great afternoon. Zoop.